ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. It is with great thanks we are gathered here today to ask your blessings upon the work of our hands. We pray, Father, that all that we say and do today will continue to further our efforts to bring good health care to our people in these islands and beyond. 
We pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen the efforts of our government as they build this health care system, that you will give all of us that have anything to do with it insight and foresight that we would know what these times require as far as health care is concerned. So be with us, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Honorable Dr. D. Orlando Smith, Premier of the Virgin Islands. Honorable Dr. Kedrick Pickering, Deputy Premier. The Honorable Ingrid Moses Scatliff, Speaker of the House of Assembly. Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton, Minister for Health and Social Development. Honorable Myron V. Walwyn. Minister for Education and Culture. Honorable Marlon Penn, the Honorable Dolores Christopher, the Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes, the Honorable Archibald Christian, the Honorable Attorney General, members of the House of Assembly, Madam Deputy Governor, Chairman, of the BVI Health Services Authority Board, Chairman and Director of the BVI Social Security Board, Financial Secretary, Permanent Secretaries and other senior public officials, Chief Executive Officer of the BVI Health Services Authority and the members of her executive management team, Project Engineer, Mr. Bennett Smith, Mr. James Todman, Mr. Josh Grizzle, Mr. John Koza, and other members of the construction teams of James Todman Construction Limited and the joint venture James Todman DCK Construction Limited, project consultants, financiers, members of the project advisory committee, members of the media, I do pray that I haven't omitted anyone, and I see someone I've omitted, so I apologize. Mrs. Skelton, we welcome you warmly. Distinguished guests all, I bid you a very pleasant good afternoon. Good afternoon. In more ways than one, this is a beautiful, beautiful day in the Virgin Islands. Amen. And it is my distinct pleasure to extend a warm welcome to this modest ceremony to witness the handover of the New People's Hospital from James Todman Construction Limited and James Todman DCK Construction Limited to the government and the people of the British Virgin Islands. Needless to say, this is a very exciting occasion for the Ministry of Health and Social Development as it marks yet another important milestone on our journey to realign the health system to meet evolving needs and ultimately to improve the health outcomes for all the people of the Virgin Islands. Few things matter as much as our health, I'm sure you'll agree. Being in good health and getting the care we need when we need it allows us to live longer, more fulfilling lives and to participate fully in our community. But we cannot stay healthy without a strong health system. And so it is as a critical part of our local health infrastructure the people of the BVI cried out for many years for the People's Hospital to be housed in a facility that is fit for purpose in order to provide a wider range and a higher standard of care. In heeding that call, a contract for the construction of the new People's Hospital was signed in January of 2007, but was subsequently terminated in April of 2010 to protect the public interest. Those were certainly dark and difficult times. And then, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, construction resumed on the building envelope and external works in May of 2011 with James Todman Construction Limited. And the internal fit-out works recommenced in May of 2012, led by the joint venture, James Todman DCK Construction Limited. <clears throat> Today, we proudly present to the people of the BVI a facility that entails a steel structure of seven floors, able to accommodate 120 beds when fully outfitted. 
The basement level houses the IT room, biomedical and facilities management services. On the ground floor where we are now, amenities will include a pharmacy, catering and dining area and gift shop, together with the reception and registration areas. The second floor will house the central sterile supply department, a chapel, administrative areas, and a fabulous physical therapy unit with a state-of-the-art hydrotherapy pool. I have to admit, this is my favorite feature of the building. The third floor accommodates accident and emergency radiology, a medical surgical ward, and a psychiatric ward in anticipation of, of the project team's future needs. On the fourth floor, we'll find three state-of-the-art operating theaters and a procedure room, recovery rooms, endoscopy, a critical care unit, neonatal unit, obstetrics, and three labor delivery and postpartum recovery rooms. So ladies, over to you. The fifth floor features the pediatric ward, another medical surgical ward, and space for future expansion. And of course, the famous sixth floor is shell space that presents some exciting strategic opportunities for expansion into the medical tourism and international med medical education markets. And beyond that is the seventh floor, which is the mechanical floor. Put another way, this is 151,000 square feet of sheer commitment to excellence. I wish to acknowledge with gratitude those who have worked in various capacities to bring us to the point of hosting today's event, including our local and overseas consultants, financial partners, and supporters, who you will hear a bit more about at a later stage in these proceedings. But first, to our main contractors. With the agreement of all parties, the completion date for the building envelope and external works contract was revised to coincide with the completion of internal works in order to coordinate certain interrelated aspects of the project. With agreed modifications to the original scope of works, the final construction costs stand at $4,656,946.10. In terms of the internal fit-out works, that contract was signed on 4th November 2011, and the agreed commencement date was established as 12th May 2012 to coincide with the contractor's mobilization. The contract period was 461 days, and the original contract sum was $30,808,870. And with all the complexities involved with remedying defective MEB works, and completing a highly technically sensitive project, the final contract, contract sum amounted to $30,808,807. I'm so excited, I'm calling it wrong. Yes, you heard me right. Ladies and gentlemen, the project was delivered within the original contract sum. In a moment, we'll hear directly from James Todd, Mr. James Todman and Mr. Josh, Josh Grizzle. But before we do so, it's my distinct pleasure to ask our Honorable Premier if he would come and bring us a few remarks on this occasion. Please welcome him. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. I think I'll adopt the protocol that was established by Madam Chair Lady. It was kind of long. <laughs> but I'd like to recognize the Deputy Governor and the Chairman of the Hospital Authority, Bishop Clare, and of course, the Minister of Health, Honorable Ms. Kelton, my Deputy, um, Deputy Premier, Dr. Kedrick Pickering, and all the other colleagues who are here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, the day that so many of us have been waiting for is almost here. And in a few short months, we will be able to receive our first patient in a new state-of-the-art facility. When I say we have been waiting, we have all been waiting. I refer, of course, to all BV Islanders, residents, and visitors. But I must say that there is a special group whose anticipation of this new facility 
has been especially keen. And that is the doctors, the nurses, the therapists, the technicians, and all those who have worked at Peebles, at the old Peebles over the years. In conditions which are not the best, making do, improvising when necessary, but always giving up their best to ensure that all those who enter the premises would receive the best treatment possible. And I can, I can say that without reservation because I was there with him. With Dr. Vantapur, who when one patient was so ill that she told us off in Spanish, a language she had never spoken before. <laughs> she did get well, of course. <laughs> and Dr. Morgan, who when I called him at three o'clock in the morning, the only thing he would say to me, what time do you want to start? Of course, Dr. Pickering was here with us. I remember distinctly, you know, of course, Dr. Pickering was a gynecologist, but he crossed trained in surgery so that we can sort of take care of each other's patients you know, when they need a rises. Doesn't happen nowadays. <laughs> and of course, I do remember one time we were doing a major operation, and um, while well, I was doing it, Dr. Pickman, my assistant, and I got this um, vertigo, and I was actually I had to sit down for the rest of the operation, for most of the operation, and I just was um, able to guide him, and he, the patient did extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, there's Dr. Brule and all the other doctors who are there, and all the nurses, Sister Donovan, Matron Donovan, Sister Norman, Sister Boy, Sister Pemberton, Mrs. Allen in the lab, Mr. Fred from the X-ray department, and all those who work with us then. And I must say that all the staff in the hospital were extremely committed to their work. Many of us will likely not have the opportunity to experience working there in a new hospital. Although I hope I'll be able to try out a new suit of theaters, I hear there are going to be three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you can invite me in to do. <laughs> maybe I'll be permitted in to do. <laughs> but we are still excited about the completion. This hospital has been long in the making, has been the subject of many a campaign promise, and its construction has passed through several administrations, all determined to cease completion. But it was finally left to this administration and particularly to the Minister of Health, the Honorable Ronnie Skelton, to see it completed. Good health care, ladies and gentlemen, is a right that all citizens of BVI should have access to. And one of the major components of health care is that provided within a hospital. And that is certainly what governments have been striving to provide by the employment of suitably trained staff over the years, and by putting in place training opportunities for persons in the medical field, in the health field. And I know that there have been several who have received training in the past several years and are here to make their contributions. And I know just a few years ago, several young people, some young doctors returned home to make their contributions, and I want to thank them. In this new facility, from all the initiatives that we've heard the ministers speak about, we'll be able to offer treatments not offered at Peebles before. And now people will not have to travel so often abroad for care, especially in emergencies where travel is more difficult than usual, and where we now have to wait sometimes, and where we now have to sometimes wait for several hours or even days to get accepted to a tertiary treatment care either in Puerto Rico or some other destination. And so ladies and gentlemen, today, we are here to see a new beginning in healthcare provision and realizing the mandate that is expected of your government. But as, even as we are nearing the completion of what will be a state of the art facility, we are aware of the need to have it staffed with properly equipped men and women, and opportunities for our young people to get involved are many and varied. As I am a surgeon, I am naturally prejudiced to, prejudiced to surgery and in medicine. And in particular in surgery, the opportunities are there. I'm disappointed actually that um, no BVN surgeon has emerged since I left to enter the field of politics, but I'm still hopeful. <laughs> it is true that serving in this part of the health sector can be demanding for nurses, doctors, and other hospital workers. But the rewards and satisfaction of helping someone to renewed health cannot be overstated. And my opinion far outweighs the trials and irritations of the work. 
So along with encouraging those who will be transitioning to the new heart facility to continue to give up their best, I'm urging our young men and women to consider a career in this field. As Minister of Tourism, I must also know the contribution which this facility will bring to that industry and by extension to the well-being of the economy of these islands. And there are many. A few months ago, I was in Jamaica and had a chance to have this course with several golfers. And this is um, in the North Coast in Jamaica. Many of whom mentioned that they would never come to, the, to a holiday in the BVI because we have no golf course. In the same way, there are many who will not travel to the BVI or such places where there's not adequate health care in the past, of course. And this question arises often about the ability of the hospital to offer dialysis treatment, dialysis treatment, an area where we fortunately are not found wanting. And there are some, several whom I know, who have been living among us for long periods of time. And as they're getting older, relocate to places where they're more confident of receiving the health care that they feel that they need as they get older. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the way to putting those days behind us. We're moving forward to the time when people want to come here for medical treatment. Because of the standard of care we are developing, not only at Peebles, but at all the other medical facilities in the BVI, including the Bougainville Clinic. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, today, it's not about a bigger hospital, but rather about providing the level of service that people expect. We are to build, we are to build a strong healthcare brand so that a new people's hospital stands for something. I'm calling our current employees of this establishment to improve, to continue, and to improve on the good customer service we provide. Let it be that primary care and tertiary care carried out with commitment and pride. I'm calling all of us, residents and citizens, to make an investment in the development of the hospital. Over the years, I've seen how local investment has helped to transform and improve the lives of others because of equipment that was donated or a service provided to the hospital. I trust that this spirit of giving continues as government cannot do it alone. We must all be part of the success. Government and the people must work together to ensure health security for all. Development is not about government alone. Development is about us trusting the weight behind what we envisage for a better Virgin Islands. Always remember, Peelbill's Hospital is a people's hospital, your hospital. I just to take care of it, maintain it, and cherish it so that generations to come can benefit from it. I commend once again Mr. Skelton and his team from the Ministry of Health for moving forward diligently to make this day a clear reality that healthcare is important to this government. I'd also like to commend all those who have worked hard to get us here, including, of course, the folk at Caramex, and Mr. Jane Stodman and DKL, DCK, who brought it home, and all the other subcontractors and project managers. I look forward to when the state of that equipment is installed, the transition to the new facility, and a fully operational and functional hospital we are all proud of. Thank you. And thank you, Premier, for those very fitting remarks. We accept your challenge to continue to improve, and we thank you for your ongoing support for the work of strengthening our health sector. We'd like to welcome the Honorable Mark Vanterpool, Minister for Communications and Works. And at this point, we will invite the representatives of James Todman Construction, so James Todman himself, and James Todman DCK Construction to signify the culmination of these great achievements by bringing remarks and making a presentation. Please welcome the man of the hour, Mr. James Todman. <laughs> and Mr. Josh Grizzle. The protocol is already established. To God be the glory, great things Amen. he have done. Amen. This morning after listening to the news, it bring back memories to me. Some 14 or 15 years ago, when this project 
actually started, which I was a contractor who did the annex. I think it was either 1999 or somewhere there. And I must say today I'm very proud and happy to be here at this gesture, not junction. In two years ago, we signed a contract for the external work, James Stadman Construction. And a few months after, we also signed a contract for the internal work with James Stadman DCK. I want to thank, the, the remark was brief, so I'll be brief. <laughs> I want to thank the former government, the Virgin Island Party, under the leadership of Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, who has seen fit to awarded me the contract to do the external work. <clears throat> I had all the chat this morning, but no. <laughs> I also want to thank the staff of James Salmon Construction, thank my family, my son, James Stadman, Jr., he, I haven't seen him, but he was a major role in bringing this project to an end. I also want to thank the government of the day. I don't want to single-hand anyone, so I'll leave it as, I won't use the word NRV. But I want to thank the government of the day for I must say, walking me through this project. They didn't actually leave me. They walked beside me, and I appreciate it. And I want to say a special thanks to the government of the day. I also want to say um, a special thanks to the banks who you know, have been the backbone, because at Fridays we need to be able to pay guys. I want to say a special thanks to them. And that's on the behalf of James Stadman, construction with external work. I want to say a special thanks to Roger Edmondson, um, Kwame, and all the staff, Vida, Donna. I also want to say a special thanks, and I feel honored to be associated with DCK International. I remember going to Pittsburgh August Sunday when everybody was preparing for August Sun, uh, the Queen Show, and I was on a plane heading to Pittsburgh. And I must say that trip was successful. That's why we could all sit and be proud today of what is here. I want to say special thanks to Hunt and Co. You know, they was the one who actually worked with me putting the joint venture together for James Stadman, DCK. I want to say a special thanks also to the architect. You know, we work as a team, the engineer, um, Josh, the project manager, um, Loyal, all, all the team. I want to be brief, so I'll cut it short. I want to say a special thanks to the whole entire team that work with James Stadman, DCK. And as I said, I'm very proud to be part of this today. And thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for the opportunity for me to come up and, and speak to you today. What a great day to come and celebrate the accomplishment of the completion of the People's Hospital. Thanks to all for all of your hard work and everyone who's uh, made a commitment to making this a success. Uh, we take great pride in the work that we've done here. We've spent many hours uh, working weekends and Saturdays, Sundays. But we know that that work that we performed will impact the lives of many for years to come. It's been an honor to work alongside the project office, Bennett Smith, uh, the design team with Lanny Huggins, Paige Sutherland Page, BCQS, James Hunt, appreciate your efforts as well as James Todman and the team. 
Thank you all for allowing us to play a part in this journey to the successful completion of the People's Hospital. Thank you. My honorable colleague, the Minister for Health, it gave me great pleasure at this time to present to you the key for the new People's Hospital. What a wonderful moment indeed. Thank you so much, James Todman Construction, James Todman DCK. Um, Josh, Josh was actually a little motivational speaker on this project. I remember the first meeting we had with the contractors and all the project team, and we were talking about the challenges that we were you know, confronting on the project, and Josh said, no, no challenges, only opportunities. And I was like, I felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulder. It was such a delight. Uh, uh, since I actually miss uh, you guys. I miss working with, with that construction team. We've learned so much, and they've shared so much with the workers in terms of um, safety. Josh didn't mention, but no accidents on site. <laughs> Absolutely zero accidents. That's unheard of. And we hear that the, the workmen, the local workmen, are translating those um, practices onto other projects. So their contribution is lasting in many ways. Thank you so much. What a great moment. All of you can say right now is hallelujah. <laughs> and who else then, the most beautiful, charming representative in recent times to take us onto the global stage, Miss World BVI 2013. We were all rooting for you. Right? Yes. And we're so proud, so incredibly proud of your accomplishments. And I kept hearing about this song that blew the judges away, and I said, yes, I need to hear this song today. So we welcome you warmly, yes. Curtis Cassandra Malone. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. Baffle king composing, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. On the roof, the beauty and the moonlight over Hallelujah. She tied you to her kitchen chair, she broke your throat and she cut your hair. From your lips, she drew the Hallelujah.
about you, but that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I'm speechless, and it's a good thing that the next speaker requires no introduction. Please welcome the Minister for Health and Social Development, the Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton, to give his response. Before I begin, you know, I, I must say today is a good day, but this was supposed to be a key handing over ceremony. This is not the official opening of People's Hospital. So you could imagine what's going to happen sometime in March, boss. You're walking towards March. <laughs> you could imagine what's going to happen. And I, my friend, QC um, Paul Webster, reminded me earlier that the 31st of October was, is a significant date because that's the day I opened the power station down at Park Pond, 1991. So only, Paul, only a lawyer can remember those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Honorable Dr. D. Orlando Smith, Ms. Ingrid Moses Catliff, Speaker of the House of Assembly of the Virgin Islands. Honorable Dr. Kedrick Pickering, Deputy Premier. I don't have the, um, I'd have the privilege of um, accepting protocol already established. <laughs> I, I'm the minister, I have to, <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> Anul Mark Vanderpool, Minister for Communication and Works. Anul Myron Wallen, Minister of Education and Culture. Anul Malcolm Christopher, Attorney General. Ms. Ines V. Archibald, Deputy Governor. Honorable members of the House of Assembly. Members, Chairman and members of the Social Security Board. Financial Secretary, Mr. Neil Smith. Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Health and Social Development, Ms. Petrona Davies, other permanent secretaries and senior public officers, Mr. James Stadman and members of the construction teams of James Stadman Construction Limited and the joint venture James Stadman DCK Construction Limited, financiers, Social Security Board and Banco Popular, project consultants and members of the project, ad project advisory committee. And this is special, prospective donors. <laughs> prospective donors. <laughs> members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a special good afternoon to everyone here. It is my honor and privileged to mark this significant moment in our history by accepting the, the keys to the new people's hospital on behalf of the government and people of the Virgin Islands. Her annals records records that in 1922, a two-room hospital was opened in Wotong, just to the right where the existing people's hospital, old people's hospital sits later named People's Hospital in honor of its founder. In accepting the handover of the new People's Hospital today, I do so reflecting on our humble beginnings and contemplating our future success as a recognized leader in the healthcare industry. It is often said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. But making a dream a reality requires courage, determination, and hard work. In this case, it required the commitment and effort of many outstanding individuals and organizations that persevered and continue to persevere in bringing this dream to a reality. My sincere gratitude is extended to all of them on behalf of the people and the government of this territory. The external works have been completed at a high standard that we have come to expect from James Stadman Construction Limited. And for this, we are thankful. Where did he disappear? Oh, we're thankful. We, also we are also extremely grateful for DCK Worldwide for accepting the bold challenge to complete the internal federal works in a successful joint venture partnership 
with James Todman Construction Limited. The quality of work produced is of a caliber that this government expects for, for this facility that will solve the healthcare needs of our people. I would like at this juncture to extend a special thanks to all the persons who helped to make this project a reality, particularly past ministers of health, Paige Sutherland Page, the architects, BCQS, the quantity surveyors, various permanent secretaries who worked with the project from its inception, and there Mr. Clyde Letson, Mr. Bennett Smith, Mrs. Rosalie Adams, Mrs. Sheila Bratwit, and Mrs. Mrs. Petrona Davies. Mr. Bennett Smith was transferred to be the project manager, and I thank him for his dedication and commitment to seeing this project through from start to finish. The entire project team included Jafali, Kasembi, and Shana Smith under the direction of the Permanent Secretary for their stellar work in moving this project to completion. Mr. Dandy Mayer, the quality engineer, Mr. Anthony McMaster, and his accounting team in the Ministry of Health and Social Development, Caramex, and their construction team, the director and staff of the Public Works Department, the heavy equipment operators, and the staff of the Ministry of Health and Social Development. I know my colleagues are listening and they understand the, um, the project team that you need for these major projects. <laughs> I also thank the people of these Virgin Islands for their faith and unwavering support for this hospital. I can say with confidence that in the months ahead, when this facility becomes fully operational, you will not be disappointed. As you can already see from this beautiful atrium, this facility is on par with any of the high quality healthcare institution I have seen. And I have seen many. In other parts, in, I have seen many in other parts of the world. I assure you of our unwavering commitment to continuous improvement to provide the highest possible standard of healthcare service to the people of these Virgin Islands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a proud milestone on our journey in moving ahead. We have already issued a tender for the transition management works to prepare the seamless transfer of operations. Encouragingly, several businesses have expressed their interest in partnering with the BVI Health Services Authority to purchase some of the equipment and other resources needed to fit this new hospital. And one of the first, the first institution that, is, that has pledged support is the Social Security Board, and they have pledged 1.5 million. <laughs> and, and we do have quite a number of others. Dr. Pickwin has introduced me to a couple, and there are those who have called us, and we have quite a number of people who are willing to make donations to this hospital. Whatever it is, if it's just a hospital bed, a wheelchair, we'll take it. We invite the entire community to, community to be a part of this historic development by pledging your contribution in the weeks and months ahead as the authority finalizes arrangement to establish a charitable trust for this purpose. A new modern hospital, along with the soon to be tendered Virgin Garden Medical Center and the proposed renovation and expansion of our community clinics are the infrastructural component of this government's holistic national health strategy. This strategy also includes a fruitful affiliation with Hemo Health of Puerto Rico HEMA doctors are bringing specialist services to our clinics on a regular basis, services that used to only be accessible overseas, thus reducing costs and inconvenience to our people. Additionally, our new health information system and our capacity building initi initiatives are steadily improving the operational efficiency, efficiency of the BVA Health Services Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, we also remain resolute 
in our commitment to ensure that everyone has access to affordable, high-quality health care, regardless of their ability to pay, while safeguarding, while safeguarding the financial sustainability of the local health system. The national health insurance will enable us to achieve and sustain this goal of universal health coverage for all our people. We are also making steady strides in the area of health promotion in partnership with other sectors as we work together to tackle chronic diseases. Today marks the end of Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, you can see I'm wearing my pink, and, and my colleague is wearing his pink shirt. We are also making steady strides in the in area of today marks the end of Cancer Awareness Month. Tomorrow will usher in Diabetes Awareness Month. Each of us is impacted in some way by chronic diseases and will do well to actively join the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, these and other initiatives are moving us closer to the goal of our national health strategy towards a healthier Virgin Islands. But, uh, but there is always work to be done. In the week ahead, I will, attend, I will be attending an international conference on medical tourism with a view to exploring strategic opportunities in this niche market. Medical tourism is a growing industry that is expected to further expand with the introduction of, a, of the Affordable Care Act in the United States. Our new state-of-the-art hospital and our natural beauty position us well to capitalize on the revenue generating and, cap and capacity building opportunities this industry of offers. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a day of celebration. I renew my call for all of us living in these Virgin Islands to unite as one and work together to further strengthen our healthcare system for the, for the benefit of present and future generations. Where there is unity, there is always victory. Thank you all for being here, and may Jehovah bless you and these beautiful Virgin Islands. Thank you so much, Minister, for those inspiring remarks, setting the vision for the road ahead in transforming our healthcare system to world-class standards. And now the pleasant duty is mine to bring you the vote of thanks. It's quite a list, and I know as soon as I sit down, the one name that I miss, it will come back to me. So I thank you first, the person that, the name that will come back to me. In the words penned by William Shakespeare, I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks and ever thanks. A tremendous debt of gratitude is owed to the Premier and Minister of Finance and his entire team for providing the resources and the support required to nurture this project from dream to reality, as the Minister said. Of course, to the Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton, a true brave heart and inspirational leader. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for rising above the fray to deliver on your promise, your pledge to the people of the Virgin Islands that we would have a modern hospital as part of a world-class health system. James Todman Construction and James Todman DCK Construction Limited, I cannot say enough. What an absolute pleasure it has been to collaborate with you on this project. To our project architects and engineers, Paige Sutherland Page, where's Lenny? Selani Huggins, welcome back. Welcome back home <laughs> to the Virgin Islands. To our quantity surveyors, BCQS, Ben and James, Ben Butler, James Hunt, right there. Take a bow. <laughs> and I see other members of your team that was ably assisted by Mr. Kevy Potter and others. We thank you sincerely for your unstinting support. I say this because you never failed to uphold your end of the bargain, even under very trying circumstances. Our gratitude is also extended to our equipment planner, 
who's not here today, Ms. Deborah Long of Medical Equipment Solutions Incorporated, the former general contractor, the joint venture Merson Carimex, Carimex Quantum, who completed most of the structural work, and with the support of systems engineering, I think I see Mr. Hildred. Welcome, thank you for being here. Arab International and Hill International for carrying out the MEP inspection and testing services to Interhealth Canada Limited for their assistance with the first phase, first two phases of the commissioning process to our financial partners, the BVI Social Security Board and Banco Popular de Puerto Rico. I think I saw Mrs. Smith. Ian, there you are. <laughs> Welcome and thank you again. <clears throat> To the Project Advisory Committee, I won't call all the names, but you know who you are. I thank you so much. I could not have asked for a better team of comrades. Um, the Ministry of Finance, I will single out, the Financial Secretary and his team, Mr. Freitz, and, and all the others who worked behind the scenes to ensure that all our payments were on time, that we had whatever support we needed to deliver on this project. We thank you sincerely. And of course, the Attorney General's Chambers, through you, Honorable AG, uh, your team, um, the Solicitor General and the others, Mr. Malvern Brathwit, Ms. Isis Potter, they could not have served us any better. We thank you for that. To the BVI Health Services Authority Board, the Chief Executive Officer, Mrs. Darlene Carty Baptiste, glamorous as usual, and her entire team, who we refer to in this project, I suppose every project, they would be the end user. So, to the end user for the vital roles that you played and for so energetically warming up. So you're doing your stretches to take the baton and to, to move it forward. To the project engineer, Mr. Bennett Smith. I've learned so much from Mr. Smith, not just about project management. Thank you for helping us to rise above the storm and to find the sunshine. To Ms. Shana Smith, assistant project engineer and the staff of the project office who were mentioned earlier, or communications team, finance unit in the Ministry of Health, Mr. Anthony McMaster, who has now moved on to the Ministry of Communications and Works. Thank you to all of you for your outstanding expertise, professionalism, commitment, and drive. I used to say we had the A-team in the Ministry of Health until I learned this week that A-team means average and acceptable. <laughs> right, Six Sigma? So now we, I'm saying we have the B team, the best and the brightest. So, <laughs> to my colleague, top managers, the deputy governor, all of you here, friends and supporters, the people of the BVI, we can never thank you enough for your encouragement and for your fervent prayers. Special thanks to the persons who participated or in any way contributed to the, to the success of today's ceremony. I'm st I still haven't gotten over the hallelujah. It's a beautiful rendition. Thank you so much again, Ms. World BVI. Information Officer Ms. Adriana Soverall, thank you for, for, for doing such an outstanding job in co coordinating today's activity. Members of the GIS team, members of the media, we appreciate your participation and your support. Heartfelt thanks to all of you for sharing this special moment with us. As Paul Keynes Douglas' character, Tanti Merle, would have said, it was only a little thing we were having. And we'll certainly look forward to welcoming you all back for the official opening where we will celebrate in grand style. May God continue to bless you all. Good afternoon.